Hello everyone, on this one we are going to start seeing how to work after the clump system that normally uh, by default or by rule of thumb you should use around three uh, clumping systems. At this moment I removed the curve and I'm just using a normal clump system that is the big clumps, a medium clump system, the big clumps are guided by the guide curves. And the last one that it's the fine clump system that it's the one that gives me the breakups. And now we are going to start seeing how to work with the noise modifier. The noise modifier itself, as you can see here, has the ability to change the strand and give a little noise. By default, it's that amount, but you have different kind of noise on a hair. You have the scraggle noise, that is kind of the fray noise that is going to give the damage of the hair, something that is around here, but this is too brutal, the kind of damage. You have also the freeze or a stray hair and the flyaways that are the ones that are completely off of the actual haircut. So we will try to see how to work each of them, but first let's try to control the noise modifier. As always, you have the mask modifier, that you can generate via expression or you can generate via map. After that, you have the frequency modifier that is going to control the amount of iterations that the noise has over the strand. So right now we are having a really high amount of iterations. If I go and lower this noise, it's going to have less iteration and could even have less. To be able to see a little bit more this uh, frequency, I'm going to increase the magnitude. Magnitude is going to define the amount of deformations that we have and the scale of that deformation and how much is going to affect the strand. So for this one, I'm going to increase the magnitude to two. You will be able to see how the curve is going to be more affected by that, by that frequency. You can see here that if you go over your limit, the frequency kind of breaks everything on the strand and it could lead to an effect similar to a dreadlock. That it's basically something quite similar to an extreme noise on upper strand noise. Now, the frequency of one, it's quite a high density or quite a high frequency. No mind, you should take this frequency to even a lower value and I'm using a 0.1 frequency here with a magnitude of 5. If you want to see the effect of that frequency you can see now how it's starting to affect the hair and the frequency is so low that the hair is moving away. So this is a nice way to create flyaways with a really really low frequency and a magnitude but we are going to control a little bit better that on the next lesson. Now if you increase the frequency you can see that it's going to break if it's too much. It's a quite sensitive uh, pattern that you can achieve a nice result by test. Now you have a good uh, amount of noise but the magnitude is too high so we can now reduce the magnitude and it's going to have a nice control over this strand, so maybe a value of 4. So you have a nice control of a uh, deformation over this strand. This one is going to break a little bit the clumps, as you can see here, but it's going to give us a better effect because the hair normally, even if it's just uh, affected when it's quite a flat and perfect uh, haircut, it's going to have a little bit of noise. After the magnitude, you have magnitude scale. You can define where on the hair you want to be able to see the actual effect. So you can reduce the effect to almost zero and you can affect just certain parts of the, the actual hair with the noise. If you need certain styles, you can see here that the now we are almost not affecting the base of the hair, nor the tips, we're only affecting the middles. If you want to break a little bit the the base of the hair you can, so you just need to break up, create a new one, let me create a bigger one here, and you just need to control the actual ramp, and you can see how 
the frizz or the noise is affecting also the base of the hair. So you can, you can control the areas, you can control and give it a spline or create more lines that it's going to give you a better effect around the actual hair. Finally, we have correlation. As the other patterns or the other uh, settings, correlation is going to define the relationship that the noise has with the other primitives that are around the first patch that it's affecting the noise. So you can change correlation, it's going to have a better blend between the other areas. So it's going to be more uh, subtle, the kind of deformation of the relationship that they have. After that, we have preserve length because the noise can lead to have a length affection or affectation where you can uh, change the actual length. Let me remove this thing just to make this part a little bit faster. So you can actually, if you don't want to see it, you can change update preview automatically. So it's going to give you the possibility to remove that. Now, if I change the, the noise and I put a really, really hard noise here, maybe a magnitude of 100, the length of my hair is going to be affected. So it's going to change even up or down the actual length of the hair. If I change preserve length that has a value around zero and 100 to 100, I'm going to preserve the size of my hair and it's going to only affect the actual noise. So you can have an effect like a furry kind of toy. This is too much, way too much, the effect that it should have. This is for no reason natural. Uh, not if you're going to generate something with guides like that. And to have that effect has no sense or makes no sense. But you can see how the effect is going to preserve length and it's going to reduce the affection and create some more natural feeling if you want to preserve the length of your hair between the noise. Bake options, we are not going to see it on this uh, tutorial. We are going to see it on a later one. Thank you for seeing.